ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أيها المؤمنون عباد الله In these few moments we wanted to revise and benefit from a short chapter of the Quran that many of us have memorized if not all of us Surah Al-Fil the chapter of the elephant and this is a chapter in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes an event that took place before the birth of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. In fact, they say the ulama, the historians and others that our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, he was born fi amil fil, the year of the elephant. And in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he mentions what transpired just before he goes into the actual tafsir of the chapter. So what he mentions rahimahullah is that Yemen, it was being governed by the people of Himyar. There was a king who was the Nawas al-Himyari, who was ruling the people of Yemen. And he had killed many Christians. In fact, they mentioned the Ashab al-Ukhdud, those who were cast into the trenches of fire, that 20,000 of them were killed by this man. And a man from them escaped. He escaped and he sought assistance from Qaisar, the ruler of the Romans at that time, the Byzantines. And that ruler, he wrote to Habasha, he wrote to Abyssinia, who was being ruled by Najashi. And this is because Ethiopia is closer to Yemen when you look at it from proximity or from distance. So to come all the way from Sham for this, it would take much more effort. And they're all Christians anyway. And those who disbelieve, they're allies of one another. So he wrote to Najashi, and Najashi, he sent a large army along with Ariyat and Abraha ibn Sabah. These two generals, they were sent with a large army to fight against the people who were there from the people of Himyar. And they destroyed them. And the ruler of that time from Banu Himyar, he died غريقاً. He died in the sea. Perhaps he tried to flee. Allahu alam. In any case, after they had defeated them and the rule and the conquerors then for the Christians from Ethiopia, or Abyssinia. Those two men, Iriyat and Abraha, they began to have khilafat, differing among themselves. As to the power, and this usually happens. So, it said one of them presented to the other, why don't we have a one-on-one -on -one to death? Whoever wins, he is, he's the one who will rule after. So they agreed to this. And Iriyat, hamala alayhi bisayfi. He took out his sword and he struck him. And what's mentioned is he severed his nose and his, his mouth. And Abraha, he had a slave boy, Atoda, who when he saw his master being defeated, he couldn't bear it anymore. He came with his dagger and he killed Ariyat. Abraha, he treated himself from the wounds and the rule was for him. As the poet said, yani the, the affair was in his hands. But the news reached Najashi that this happened. So he became angry and he sent him a letter saying to him, that he made an oath that he was going to step on the land of Yemen and that he was going to sever his head. So after this letter of Najashi reached Abraha, he began he began to be soft with him and kind with him, sending him gifts. Perhaps he will change his mind. And he continues like this. And from his hinka and his sharpness, he sends him some earth from the land of Yemen and some strands of hair from his forelock. And he says, take this with the gifts and tell the king to step on this soil. This is soil from Yemen. And this is my hair for my forelock. Meaning that, His oath will be fulfilled by this. 
When they switched Najashi, he became pleased and he forgave him. So, Abraha al Ashram, his nickname became Al Ashram, the man with the split lip. He continued to rule like this and he wanted to please Najashi. So he decided to build for him a kanisa, a church, fi uqri san'a, in the middle of San'a. As San'a, if you go back to today, even today, there is San'a al Qadima, the old San'a, which is surrounded by a wall. And within it, his place of worship that he built is still there. Now it's just a place of majari, sewage passes through it. In any case, what happened is that he decided to build for the king a church. And when he goes to build this church, he builds an enormous church, finely decorated with the best of things at that time. And the Arab, they would call it Qulayis. This is the nickname of that church that Najashi built. And this is because they said, if a person wanted to look up at it, his qulunswa, his hat on his head would fall off from how lofty that building was. So they called it Qulayis. He wanted to direct the people away from the Kaaba and to come to this church instead. And this disturbed the Arabs. How can this man take away this site? So what they did was, some have said that he was from the people of Quraysh, Allah Alam who the man was. He went into this place of worship, the Kanisa, at a time where no one was around and he defecated. So the Senada, the guards, they came across this the feces and they said, look what someone has done. And he became angry and he said, this has only come from the people of Quraysh. Muqatil ibn Sulaiman, he mentions that a man burnt the place down. Allahu alam, I haven't come across many historians saying this. But most of the historians, they agree that what happened was defecation in this church. So Abraha, he prepared an army to take revenge. And where is he going? To the house of Allah Azza wa in Mecca. He says, I have to destroy this place from anger. And he prepared an enormous army. And he was assisted by Najashi, who also sent elephants from Ethiopia. There's no elephants in Yemen. He sent elephants. Some narrations indicate eight, some indicate 12. And he sent an enormous elephant that was called Mahmoud. And this was the leader of all of the elephants. Uh, and a gigantic elephant in size. The historians mention this. So in any case, he prepared his army. And he wants to destroy the Kaaba. So he begins his march towards the north. And when the various tribes of the Arabs heard this, as Mecca is considered to be the Mecca for everyone. You want to perform Hajj? If you're coming from Yemen or Sham or any other region, you have to go to Mecca. So they were taken by this Hamiyya, this, this anger for their, their place of worship. Even though they're committing shirk, but they began to fight. So there was a, a king called Dhu Nafr. He was defeated and his army was defeated. They took him as a captive and they dragged him along with them in their march. Then he went by the people of Khath'am and there comes out Nufayl ibn Habib al khathami with his army and they're defeated as well. This is a, you can consider them to be a superpower at that time. No one's able to, in that region of the world, who's able to stand in front of them. They have elephants like the tanks which are there today and these planes without pilots today and no one is able to stand in front of them except they're defeated. He continued his march north until he got to the region of Ta'if. And the people of Ta'if, Thaqif, Sana'uhu. They made an agreement with him privately on the side. So that their deity that they were worshipping would not be harmed. They made an agreement with him on the side. And they sent with him a delil, someone who would direct them to Mecca. So you always find this khianat among the people. They sent with him a delil who directs them the rest of the way. A guide. So... They continue their journey. This is about 67 kilometers between Ta'if and Mecca. Not a far distance. So they continue their journey. When they got to Sarh al Kaaba, the plain areas around the Kaaba where the camels would graze, the army found camels. And these camels belonged to the grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, who was Abdul Muttalib, Shaybat al Hamd. They took his 200 camels and then they began to see what's going on and how they were going to react to this. So they sent a person, Abraha, the army from Ethiopia, they sent a person to speak, who speaks Arabic. Go to them, وَأْتِ أَشْرَفَهُمْ And go to the most noble from among them and speak to him and see what they're planning to do. So he goes and he's directed to Abdul Muttalib, the, the grandfather of Rasulullah and the discussion begins. 
So then he tells him, we're not here to fight you. As long as, as long as you don't prevent him from coming to the Kaaba, there's no war between us anyway. So he mentioned Ibn Kathir that Abdul Muttalib said to him, this house will be protected by Allah. And if Allah gives you room, then this is his house. We don't have the ability to fight you anyway. So the man proposes to him, let's go back and talk to Abraha directly. Let him hear this from you. So Abdul Muttalib goes back with the man to Abraha. Abraha saw him and he became amazed. He was a handsome man. And the way that he presented himself also, it had an impact. So he began to speak to him. What do you want? Tell me any haja, any need and I will fulfill. So Abdul Muttalib says to him, return to me my camels. So Abraha is amazed. I come with this army to destroy your place of worship. And you're talking to me about camels. Why are you talking to me about camels? So he says to him, I am Rabbul Ibil. I am the owner of these camels. Walbayti Rabbun Yahmi. And that Kaaba you're going towards, it has a Rabb, Allah, who will protect it. So they gave him back his camels. And Abraha prepared his army to go in and destroy the Kaaba. Now he's at the Sarah. He aligns his army. And Ibn Kathir also mentions prior that the reason the, camp, the, the elephants rather were prepared is that he was going to tie these elephants to Arkan al Kaaba bi Salasil. They were going to use chains and tie these chains to the pillars of the Kaaba so they would destroy the Kaaba in one go. So when they prepared the army, they brought the elephant forward, the largest of the elephants, and they're telling it, go forward. Go forward towards the Haram. And it refuses. And it's sitting there. And they're gording it and hitting it in its head to move. And it refuses to move. When they turn it towards Sham, towards the north, it moves. When they turn it back towards Yemen, it moves. You turn it to the east, west, it moves. But when you turn it towards the Kaaba directly, it refuses to move. And it remains there sitting. So they are amazed at what's going on. And what shows the truthfulness of this is a hadith collected by Bukhari. When the Prophet ﷺ in the the conquest of Hudaybiyah. He was on his camel, Qaswa. And the Qaswa, this camel sat and it refused to move. So they tried everything and it wasn't moving. Then they began to say, Khalatil Qaswa. This camel of the Prophet has become stubborn. Then the Prophet defends the camel saying, Ma Khalatil Qaswa wa ma laha bi This camel, it will never become stubborn. And this is not the traits of this camel. Walakin habasaha habisul fil. But it was stalled, it was held by the one who held the elephant. Allahu Akbar. So this shows the truthfulness of that event. That the camel was held by, the elephant was held by Allah, just like the camel was held. And while they're in this state, Abdul Muttalib, prior to this, before they got really close, what Ibn Kathir mentions is, he went to the door of the Kaaba, he clung onto the ring and he began to make dua to Allah, to, for Allah to defend the Kaaba. And they left a hundred badana, a hundred sacrificial camels for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around the Kaaba. And the intent was that perhaps these people, yastahillunaha, that they will take these animals and kill them and take them for themselves. And therefore Allah, فَيَغَارُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ And Allah will become angry because of this and destroy them. So they put, took whatever asbab that they had. Whatever asbab was in their hands. All they had was the, those camels and making dua. Then they left Mecca. He told them, Abdul Muttalib, leave Mecca and go around the mountains. Protecting them in Arat al-Jaysh. Protecting them from the harm that may come to them from the armies. In al muluka idha dakhalu qariyatan afsaduha waj'alu a'izzat ahliha adhillah wa kathalika yaf'aloon. When the kings, they enter a land, what do they do? They make the lofty and the mighty of the people lowly. And this is what they do. So he did not want the ma'arra, the shame of this army doing anything to the women or anything to them. So he told them, go around the the mountains. فَقُرَيْجْ حَوْلَ الْجِبَالِ يَنْظُرُونَ They are on the mountains watching what's taking place. And they're seeing that these people are not able to advance. وَهُمْ فِي هَذَا الْحَالِ جَاءَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ الْجَاءِ There came to them from Allah Azza wa Jal the comer. طَيْرًا أَبَابِيلٍ Flocks of birds. Flocks of birds. Ibn Abbas says that they were black in color, others say green. Wallahu alam, perhaps they were dark green and some saw them to be black. These birds, they were small like a hamama, smaller than a dove, they say. And they were carrying each one of them three stones. One in the beak and two in their hands. And they came and they began to let loose these stones on an army that could not be stopped. Small birds, small birds. 
and an army that could not be stopped. And what does Allah Azza tell us? That they were destroyed. Now we'll come to the chapter inshallah. What's interesting about this is some of them fled, they say. Some of them took off. But when these pellets would hit them from these birds, their limbs would fall. Subhanallah. And they passed away. Some of them were fleeing. They say, Abraha, he made it all the way back to Sana'a. He told him the story and then his chest split and his heart could be seen. Subhanallah. And that was the end of Abraha. And that was the end of the entire army that came to destroy the house of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Ibadullah, this is a lesson for us that the uwa and the might and the strength is from Allah Jalla wa'ala. And this is important for us to maintain in our hearts, especially in the times that we're going through. That the quwa and the izz and the might is from Allah Azza wa Jal. فَلَا بُدْ مِنَ التَّضَرُّعُ If we have this, Allah, this love and this belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, we must be crying out more for assistance and more for help for our brothers and sisters who are being harmed in Palestine. And Ibad Allah, look at Abdul Muttalib and what's being mentioned about him as a disbeliever at that time. He was upon the polytheism of Quraysh, shirk. And what shows he was upon shirk? Is when Abu Talib, his son, dies, what does he say? I die upon the way of my father, Abdul Muttalib. So they were upon disbelief. Ma'adhalika, what is he doing? He's clinging on to the, the door of the Kaaba and he's asking Allah for help. Allah Rabbul Alameen for help. Where are we from this? Where are we from this? Ibad Allah, Allah, He tells us in this chapter, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al feel. Have you not seen? What Allah Azza wa Jal, your Lord, did to Ashab al Fil, the companions of these elephants. Did He not make their kaid, their plot, fi tadlil, a waste? A waste. And they say the ulama al kaid is shed min al makr. You have the word makr, which is plotting. When the plotting is severe and intense, it comes to the level of kaid. Allah made all of their plots tadlil, a waste. He sent to them. Birds, flocks of birds. Hey, they say firaq. Flocks of birds that came. And these flocks of birds, as we've heard, small in size. And they're dropping these little pellets. It was an air raid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An air raid that destroyed an entire army. Tarmihim bi hijarat min sijji. That was striking them with hijara stones of dry clay. Tarmihim bi hijarat min sijji. Faja'alahum ka'asfin ma'kul. And Allah made them ka'asf. They say the asf. This is a stock. You have the husk that surrounds the grain. I'm sure we know what we're talking about. You have the, the rice, or you have the barley or the wheat, the husk that surrounds it, it's called asf. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, we turn them into asf. Not only this husk, but He says husk, which is ma'kul, which has been eaten. And what is eaten, it exits the body, it's useless. No benefit. So two things are found in it. It's a asf, which has no benefit, which is ma'kul and has been eaten. Subhanallah. Allah humiliates an entire army that no one could stand in front of. Ibadullah, Ibadullah. Let us take Ibar from the likes of these ayat, short chapters that carry significant meanings to return us back to the path of Allah Azza in the times of difficulty. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد عباد الله we've heard some of the benefits that the people of knowledge have mentioned concerning this short but powerful chapter of the Quran a lesson indeed for every believer especially in the time of hardship to know that Allah عز وجل he is there for us and he is seeing what's going on from these war crimes and this genocide and ethnic cleansing which is happening, Allah Azza wa Jal, Yara kulla dhalika. Allah, He sees all of it. And it is a must for us to take this sabab al-shari, this dua that will be idhni Allah Azza wa Jal be a key for our brothers and sisters to get the relief. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He knows who He will accept that dua from or who that woman will be that he will accept, accept the dua from Allah Azza wa Jal, he knows. So it's important that we keep reminding the people and keep encouraging the people not to forget this matter. It's easy to become lost in what's going on in the social media. We find yourself at times following the news. What's going on? What's happening? And it becomes 
almost a time consuming effort where the connection with Allah Azawajal and making dua at that time would have been better and more fruitful. So Ibadallah, the point of this was a number of reasons we mentioned this narration. The qudra wa quwwatillahi azzawajal the power and ability of Allah Azawajal never forget it. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْءًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Then his affair, when he decides the matter, is to say, be and it is. And for us also, to look at the likes of Abdul Muttalib, who's a disbeliever, and what is he doing when he didn't have the ability? He has nothing but to make dua. وَنَحْنُ أَحَقُّ وَأَوْلَى بِالدُّعَى And we are more deserved that we are making dua. You are, you are people of Islam, the nation that Allah has granted victory. Do not grieve and do not become weak. Well, you are the superior if you're true believers. About Allah, these are tests and they continue to happen. And they have happened before time. Go back in history. What happened in Baghdad when the Tatar came in? We're crying about what's happening today. They killed Alf, Alf Khamsamiya, as Ibn Kathir says. They entered Baghdad, the Tatar, and they killed 1,500,000 people. 1,500,000 people. The entire population of Gaza, may Allah Azza wa Jalla uplift the calamity that has befallen them. And they say it's about 2.2 million. 2.2 million. They say the smell of the bodies in Baghdad and Iraq was being smelt in Sham. Due to how many bodies were there killed. Abad Allah, this is not the first time a calamity like this has happened. Well, I can undur. Where did it end? The Tatar, they kept, they went up to Sham after Iraq. And then all that's left in front of them as a Muslim stronghold, the ulama mention is the people of Egypt. And who are they being led by? Saif al-Din Quds. Wa min al-Mawali. He was a slave, a freed slave. He took power after his master died and he began to lead them. Even though he was sold into slavery from a young age, he was not a slave to begin with, but he was sold into slavery due to wars that took place. About Allah, this is the only front, the final frontier. If Egypt drops, there is no Islam. It's going to be dominated by disbelief. No Islamic government remaining on the face of the earth. Sayyid Fuddin, he makes his march forward with his fighters. And they reach a region of the land called Ain al-Jarut, which is in today Palestinian land. It's Palestinian land. This is occupation, illegal occupation. It's in Palestine, Ain al-Jarut. Qareeb min Jerusalem. It's close to Jerusalem. And they fought a battle there. That Allah Azza wa gave victory to the Muslims. And the battle it was severe and intense. To the extent that at some point it was looking like the Tatar are about to defeat them. And they say, Sayyid Din Quds, Rahmatullah alayhi, in the battle he took off his helmet and threw it down and he took his sword saying, Wa Islama! Wa Islama! Wa Islama! And he fought courageously until they were defeated before the Lahaj Allah. Ibadullah, it has to be for Islam. Your dua, it should be Nusra al-Islam, not liqawmiyya, nationalism. And my people and this, it should be for Tawheed and the deen of Rabbul Alameen, giving victory over the enemies of Allah Jalla wa'ala. It pains us all and it hurts us all. Walakin al-hikmah lillahi Jalla wa'ala. The wisdom, it belongs to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Nasallallaha bimannihi wa karmi wa ihsanih. أن يرحمنا ويرحم جميع المسلمين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم عن إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم أنج المستضعفين من المؤمنين في فلسطين اللهم أنجهم اللهم أنجهم اللهم أنجهم اللهم ارفع ما نزل بهم من بلاء اللهم ارفع ما نزل بهم من بلاء اللهم انصرهم ولا تنصر عليهم وامكر لهم ولا تمكر عليهم وعنهم ولا تعن عليهم وانصرهم على من بغى عليهم اللهم شافي جرحاهم ومرضاهم اللهم شافي جرحاهم ومرضاهم اللهم شافي جرحاهم ومرضاهم اللهم ارحم موتاهم وتقبلهم في الشهداء اللهم ارحم موتاهم وتقبلهم في الشهداء اللهم ارحم موتاهم وتقبلهم في الشهداء اللهم عليك باليهود المجرمين المعتدين اللهم عليك باليهود ومن معهم اللهم عليك باليهود ومن معهم اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم إنهم لا يعجزونك فأرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك اللهم إنهم لا يعجزونك فأرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك 
اللهم إنهم لا يعجزونك فأرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك يا رب العالمين